course, this guy needs no introduction at all. Johnny Vodakovich played last night at the Sandbar, you know, one of the uh, legendary drummers of New Orleans. And uh, I'm sure he has a lot to say. He always does. <laughs> and uh, how about a hand for Johnny Vodakovich?
We got the bass drum on that one. <laughs> <laughs> the cam camera went like that. <laughs> Well, you know, should, I'm dangerous with a camera, man. I, I did a little bit of that myself. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I was ducking. It's a lure, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Uh, I, we have mixed instruments, right? We've got some guitar players. We've got some drummers. We've got some bass players. We've got, we got a whole bunch of different kind of people uh, playing different instruments. So, so that's really good. Uh, and they can play with you, too, man. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely want that to happen. Uh, and uh, one thing I, 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 I say is, you know, when, when, I'm, when I'm in a room with a lot of different musicians, you know, it, 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 and, you know I, 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 I'm not going to have a, a, a set thing that I'm going to say. I mean, there's things that I say, but they're not set. They're only said when I feel as though that I, you know, I'm with the right people or, or, or the people that I'm saying it to make sense. Otherwise, I'd just be spitting out a lot of stuff like, like, a, like a book. You know? So what I would like to ask you is if anybody has any questions or ideas that they might want to ask me or tell me an idea and I'll take off on it, and, uh, uh, and and that way you can see you can you can feel a little bit about what's on the inside of me, because I think that school and uh, uh, taking music lessons all totally imperative. You know, uh, I think that uh, school is what I call uh, or, or when you you know you're studying or you're practicing using a book or you're going to a teacher you're going to school you're basically uh, 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 taking in external knowledge you know the knowledge from the books the knowledge from the teachers the knowledge of what that guy's playing on a record that you might be transcribing or uh, so that, that's what I call external knowledge you know but at some point in your life as as a musician you have all of this external knowledge that you digest, you know. Then, at some point in your life, you have to you you, ha you have to work on your personal identity, your your fingerprint, in other words, you know. And that means what makes you sound like you. What makes people want to say, oh, I don't know, wait, wait. oh no, we got to, oh, hey man, we got to call, we got to call this guy. Because he, you know, he's the perfect guy for that. man. He, that thing he does, you know, that little beat he plays, or that little way he has of, of approaching songs. He's the guy to cut to cut this record or this track or, or do this job. So you want you want to sort of create your own personality from all of this external knowledge. You know, uh, uh, you have to eventually go on the inside and see what's internal and, and use that knowledge also to form your personal picture, who you are, you know, that makes you the way you play, you know, different from the other guy, you know, I mean, uh, because you, we all know that, you know, there's so many DVDs and instructional books that, you, you know, by great drummers, I, I'll just use one off the top of my head because uh, you know, he, he, he kind of uh, got a lot of cats to play this way. There was Steve Gadd, you know, and cats started digging on Steve Gadd, man. Man, for, for a while there, there was a million drummers all over the world that could play like Steve Gadd, you know. Uh, but, but I'm saying take it a step further. You got to go on the inside. You have to go on the inside, too, at some point in your life, you know. When, you know, and it's not going to be school, and it's not going to be a teacher, and it's it's, it's not going to be books. You know, it's going to be it's going to be you learning how to teach your in, inner self, or you learning how to let your inner self teach you. I think that was probably the right way to say what I meant. Sometimes I say stuff, and. Sometimes I, I say stuff and it's not exactly what I mean. So it's sometimes I have I have difficulty with words in saying what I mean. So you have to bear with me on these points. Uh, so I'm into two things today. 
Would that the external knowledge, you know, I can throw at you? Fine. And, I, and, 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 and I'm here to urge you to go on the inside. It's a lot, it's all happening on the inside. You know, as far as your identity, who you are, got to have you on the state, man. You know the thing you play, man, we got to get you over here. Can you be over here at 3.30? We got to have you. You know, got to have you on the stage. We got to have you play this this track. You know, because of the way you play, whether it be that jazz you type of way you approach that jazz funk, or whether it be the way you approach that New Orleans street beat stuff. And I've been very fortunate in, in, in my years that I've gotten calls from all over the world just to play that street beat stuff on the snare drum that I've been playing as a kid. You know, so I've been very lucky with that. You know, so that, so everybody, everybody has to find out that little special something inside of you. External knowledge is all great because that gives you all the knowledge. Then, then, then you go on the inside and teach yourself, and eventually you're going to get to an age or a period in your in, in your growth where you will start reduction and that reduction of the external knowledge. Well, I don't really need that. I don't really need that. And then you can start tapering things down to who you are, your shape, your, your approach, your, your feel about the way you love for music, you know? Love for music. Mm -hmm. That you gotta go on your side and find, too. You know, love for music. Can I ask you a question? Please. So what, you know, um, I mean, I play with many, many drummers, and it's, it, it seems like, for the most part, drummers are usually side men. They're usually, they're usually you know, unless you, you're a leader occasionally, it seems like they're drum leaders or whatever, which you get a chance to do whatever you want to do. But as a, as a side man, what makes people want to hire a drummer because they are a good... Uh, I don't know, how, should I, how should I state your question? In other words, what makes a really good supportive drummer? Like to me, you you've always been this really empathetic guy that gets on the bandstand and and listens to what the other people are playing, and you make them sound good. Whereas been on the bandstand with other people, where it's just like it's all about them showing us what it, they can do, whatever you know. So talk to that a little bit, because I mean I think that that's something that uh, well, you know as a side man, you, you're you're basically at the mercy of people wanting to hire you and they're going to hire you for either specific things like you're talking about like playing on the Wallens drum beat or whatever or specifically the way you play mm -hmm. but and there's a lot of people that can do that you know but then but then there's, there's also the the supportive role of a drummer mm -hmm. you know talk a little bit about that uh -huh. well for sure you're a side man as a drummer and uh, uh, for sure uh, I, I don't think you should take your 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 personal ego and thoughts and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this to a gig. When you're a side man, you should really, uh, your, your job is, is, is what I always turn to the bass player and say, look, let's hook up and make this cat sound good. Well, I like to call it polishing the guy we're backing up. Let's polish this guy. Because if the side men are really grooving and hooking up and being very empathetic, and that's the first way to say, it, let's make him sound good, that's the first step in empathy right there. It's not about what I'm going to play, it's about what can I do to make, what's, and, 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 and what, what can I do to make, make, make this guy solo us or this next solo us or this band sound good, you know? What do I have to adjust in, 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 in my normal playing? And uh, so, as a side man, my concept is exactly to really make a cat feel comfortable if he's playing solo. You know, some guys don't want to hear a lot of interplay, reaction. Some guys would prefer, you know, you keep in a solid time. I don't know what they prefer. So what you have to do is you have to put your antennas up. That's more empathy. Empathy step number two. You got to grow antennas as a side man. And antennas mean you play. You know your stuff. You might even be a side man, saxophone player. You know how, you know how to play the saxophone, but you, you're still gonna want to play with this guy who's the leader or the trumpet player or the guy that hides you or the guy that's maybe not needs a little 
extra polish to make him sound good. You know, and when you can, it, so what you have to do is you have to de detect by what you play in, within seconds, uh-oh, that what I just played, I can see that he, he that sort of like broke his, his trend of thought or that kind of made him uh, slightly un uncomfortable for a moment, you know? So you, so, so I, I, you have to learn how to detect what, what you're doing as a sideman, in my case, a drummer, and I'm thinking about the, the, the bass player and, and, and the harmonic player, like, like the guitar player or the piano player, and think about us three. What can we do to cradle this guy who's up here playing a solo, with, whatever instrument it might be? What can we do as sidemen to make him feel really comfortable, make him you know, like, feel like he don't have any, anything to worry about, especially where he's at, where the time's at. Uh, 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 if you're playing too much, uh, it confuses him, so he might be the kind of guy, you know, you play a little bit less. He, he, might, he might not be afraid of the lessons. Some guys say, I've had, I, I play, when, I was, when, I, when, when I was about 19 or 20 years old, I had a gig with Dizzy Gillespie, and I was hired as a sideman. And uh, uh, we were up on a bandstand, and I think the first tune was something like Autumn Leaves, and we played it, you know. And uh, the second tune was something slower, and I picked up a pair of brushes, and, and he turned to me and said, no, man, get them sticks. And so <laughs> I immediately grabbed the sticks, and I'm a 20-year-old cat playing with Dizzy Gillespie and Bobby Hackett, you know, these famous, famous people. And uh, 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 so I did, I did that, and then Dizzy told me later on, he says, kick me, kick me, play a bunch of, play a bunch of shit, yeah. play a bunch, play a bunch of stuff, man, kick me, kick me, you know? So he was the kind of guy that wanted you to kick him a bunch. Yeah, and, and, and then I played with Benny Wallace, who said, you know, hey, man, look, don't get so busy behind me when I'm playing. You know, so I mean, <laughs> completely opposite, you know, so you, you have to pick up on it. You know, uh, I, uh, as I grew, as I've grown older, as I keep growing older, uh, I, I, you know, I keep this one uh, pr uh, uh, process, you know, up front. And when I walk on a gig, you know, I got to feel this cat out. You know, if it's somebody I, I don't know too well or I haven't played with in a, uh, 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 I haven't played with, so I, ha I, I have to try to figure out what makes him comfortable. So as a side man, I think it's important to feel out what makes the guys comfortable. Because as a side man, what you want to do is you want to take, he might have a good beat, he might have a good beat, he might have a good beat, but the idea to make the groove is not, don't make a difference if everybody's got a good beat. You know, he's got a good beat on that saxophone, the way he can, he don't need a drum, his beat is so strong. So, 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 so you, what you got to do as a, as a drummer, as you got to think in, in terms of around the roundness of everybody's beat and try to get everybody's beat to line up to get that groove. You know, that, that, that's my goal as a drummer, to try to like, and I call it policing the music. A drummer's job is to police the music. And I don't mean that in, in, in a hard sense. I mean policing it, in other words, keeping it together. Getting everybody on the same page. In this case, as a drummer, getting everybody in this beat. And I don't think of a beat like this, I think of a beat like this. Boom. Ooh, nice floating planets. Each beat is a big old planet. <laughs> you, you, you guys who have heard me before, I say the same thing all the time, man. I live in a world of planets. You know, to me, every beat is a planet. It has a top right side, and you can go down the middle of the planet, and you can get out under the back, dark, low side of it. Depends on what it takes to make, to make that collective all of these different beats come together and hopefully create the groove you know if, you know everybody you can take two two great musicians 
put them together and say play. And they both have good beats, but maybe it doesn't have good dish, this is, uh, maybe uh, a lot of virtuosity as far as playing their instruments go and a lot of, you know, uh, healthy ego in their playing, but are they playing together? You know, and that might take a guy to back off of his greatness. And so, let me get back so I can, I can, I can get with this cat here. Like, oh yeah, okay. I'm just, I'm, if I lie low, it can be good. Now, maybe I have to be a little more aggressive or the alpha guy, you know? And say, so, okay, let me take the alpha position. And, you know, if, if, if I put a little spunk on him, you know, then maybe that, that'll excite him and, 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 and create that, that sphere of one beat, you know? Of course, in music, we're dealing with beat after beat after beat. So, I mean, those planets can be flying by, you know? You said one beat? Well, one beat, you know, one beat is, 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 is a start. It's a place to start. You know, once you feel one beat come together, then more likely you're going to feel two. And when two come, it's chaos. I mean, it's going to evolve into more and more. The more beats you get to get, get you, the more times, the more times everybody's sort of in the same zone, then it will create inertia. It will create that uh, 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 natural physics of the universe, and it will be easier. Once you get that one or two beats together where the whole band is synced up, then it becomes easier because then everybody's sort of on the same loop. And then it's your job as a drummer to keep them there, which means monitoring. You can't be thinking about drones if you're a drummer. How many guys are drummers? Okay, if you're drummers, you can't be thinking, you know, you, you can't be think, thinking too much about what you're playing. You have, to do, you have to learn that in the practice room in the dark or wherever you do it because this has got to be muscle memory, you know? Because your head and your brain and your ears has to be totally attuned to where this guy is playing, where's the bass player tonight, where, where's the piano, what, what, you know? And, and even though you might play with the same guys every night, it's not going to be the same. I mean, you can be playing with this bass player, boy, this tune we played, well, we played this tune last night, man, and we were slamming, man, the tune was great. But, uh, but tonight, right before the gig, he, uh, uh, he had an argument with his girlfriend in the parking lot. So he comes to the gig and he's like, come on, bro. You know, or, or either the piano player, the piano player, ding, 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 and you say, wow, what's up with him? Last night he was real cool. Well, he ate three donuts before he got up on the bandstand. And he's, you know, he's jacked up on sugar, and you got to calm him down a little bit, you know? So you have a job to do that does not, you can't be thinking about all of this playing on the, on the drums. And there's not too much to think about on the drums. You can't, there ain't no notes. You can't hit the wrong notes, so you ain't gonna worry about that. <laughs> All you gotta worry about is keeping that dance going and getting everybody inside the the sphere of the rhythm, you know. Uh, so empathy is the ticket. Empathy. Uh, 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 being totally aware, of what, that's why I call it policing the music, because you've got to listen, or uh, watch, but listen, you know, like, like a good cop would do to everything that's going around, uh, around you, you know? You know, make, you know keep things, you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully attain a groove. A groove is something that not one individual can do. A good beat is something one individual can do. But it takes two or more people to make a groove. A groove is when two good beats come together. That's more, that's more, that's more, more better. <laughs> that's better than uh, 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 anything any one person can play. When two people are hooking up, when they locked in, that's better than either one of them can do alone. Playing by himself, he can have a good beat. But when you got two people whose beats come together, then, then all of a sudden we're elevated now. And you can feel it. You, you'll be able to feel it in your stomach. 
You know, you will be able, when you feel that groove, you, it's a feeling. You, you'll know that all of a sudden everybody's sort of like on the, on the same, the same highway, you know, traveling at the same speed. Everybody's just kind of synced up, you know, in sync, you know, so to speak. Uh, so you're saying that a drummer can make or break the band? Most people do say that, and I and, and I, I think for the most part that's pretty pretty close to it. Most people say you can have a good band, but if the drummer's not happening, the band ain't really going to be happening. You know, so the best thing a drummer can do is to be aware of who he's playing with. Uh, and try to, uh, you know, do what he has to do to help the beats come together. Well, Mel, Mel Yen told me that the drum is the quarterback of the band. He said the drum is the quarterback. Um, yeah, 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 in a way, in a way. But uh, I don't think of myself so much as a quarterback. I just think of myself as a team player. Yeah. You know? I, you know, a quarterback sound that that, that, that could be a, if 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 the word quarterback didn't come with uh, with the feeling of of this guy about guy being superior to the rest, which sometimes people mistake that word because without a good without a good offensive line, a quarterback ain't nothing, right? Yeah. Right? That's right? True. So I mean, we're good. We're good to good quarterbacks. So like, that's like that's one guy with a good beat, and and, and no beats coming together. But when when that offensive line is in sync with the quarterback, then we got a groove. How did you develop your sound? Uh, just playing all the time and and, and, and listening to lots of uh, orchestral music, I think, and I, I think. Because uh, I, I like orchestra music, and uh, I, I also listening to music that does not have a lot of that. that uh, I listen to a lot of music that doesn't have drums. We seem to paint when you play, like you paint the picture. Yeah, or you dance, man. You were talking about that the other day. That I mean, the way you look on the drums, it's just so free flowing. And you were talking, you, you had a video you sent us of Fred Astaire playing as a dance piece playing the drums which oh, was right. really good but you know and you, even even right now man you look like you're dancing and waltzing around a room man <laughs> how important is that like just behind the drums and just to be fluid you know? well I, 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 I think the drums are you know like I said it's coming from the inside so therefore I think my whole body is the drum set you mm -hmm. know and I mean, you see some guys that are like really tense. Yeah, when it's like, you're like, and, and there's sometimes you know, and I, 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 I love Dewey Redmond, and I saw I saw Dewey Redmond back in, in the early '70s in in, in Chicago, uh, in, in the above Russia, right on uh, across the street from the, the Maryland Hotel, and he was playing in the theater. Jazz showcase with Arnett, right? Huh? With its jazz showcase with our jazz show in the theater upstairs. The upstairs, right? yeah. I downstairs with Roy. Yeah, yeah. Violin, yeah. Don Cherry, yeah. Don Cherry, yeah. Charlie Hayden, yeah. Ed Blackwell, and I stayed in the same hotel and ho same hotel with them for a week. Yeah. And my you room was right across from Ornette. Violin playing. Yeah. I mean, that was unbelievable. That's the loudest thing I ever heard. It's oh, like standing in front of a seven forty. You should be in a hotel with yeah. a room right across from you. He started at 10 o'clock in the morning. It, it was really... <laughs> ouch. Ouch. Yeah, from, yeah, from 10 a.m. to lunch, it was ouch. Yeah. Then he'd stop, then he'd go back in his room and, and for a you know, few hours, then he'd get out his horns, and that was kind of ouchy, too. Right. Charlie yeah. Hayden was wearing that like headgear like the air guy, airport guys wear. Yes. <laughs> and that kid, while he's playing bass at the concert. Oh, what kind of heavy duty headgear? And, and with yeah. cotton in his ears. And then, and, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I know. And, 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 small world. And, and, and so like, we talk about, you know, we're talking about you said dancing and moving. I get to that in a minute. But 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 it, the dance could be an inner dance, you know. No movement could be shown. It just so happens that this way I do because the drums to me is very much like dancing. And the old men used to say, uh, I, I, and, and I got, and, and it related it. The old men would tell me, "Hey kid, yeah, 
he, yeah, listen to that drum because he'd be, tip, he be tippy-toeing around the drums. And that meant he's basically tap dancing around the drums. They call it tippy-toeing. You know, the old cats. The cats would say, tippy-toe, Johnny, tippy-toe. Uh, probably because I was bashing or something, you know. But, but I feel as though, you know, the, the drums, when I'm playing at rhythm, it's coming from, the, remember it said the, the internal thing? The dance is coming from within uh, me. It's coming through my head, you know, up through here, through here, through here to the stick to the instrument. I think they're all one. When, when I hit the cymbal, I'm not going ting. To me, it's ting, ting. You know? And plus, the movement is shape, as in painting. <laughs> it's shape. There's a lot to be learned from painting. I don't mean painting. I, I'm, I know. Uh, I mean, you go to an art museum and you and look at a piece. Especially, I love, I love to look at, uh, I like to, love to, I like to look at everything. But, I mean, uh, 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 drum stuff, I could, what, what I do with students sometimes is I put a picture in front of them. And I say, play that picture. And they look at me like I'm nuts. <laughs> and I said, and I, then I have to explain. You, you know, we have 32 bar forms, we have AABAs, we got this shape, so we got this shape. But, and so do we have those same shapes in our real world. That door, that's an AABA form to me, that's 32 bars right off the bat. <laughs> that air conditioner filter over there is 32 bars, but that, that, I, I could easily call that two 16 bar halves. And that, that's like a, a, a tune with no, with no bridges. Oh, I didn't see the bottom. The bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's a, 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 could be a, a, could be, if you want to repeat the top, that's two A's and you're going to be in an A out. And that's, look how perfect symmetrical that is, you know? I mean, to me, that, if I look at it long enough, I have to force it to, make, to sing to me. You know, and 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 and, 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 and all, all, all of our world is is basically uh, 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 rectangles and circles. You know, and circles are nothing but uh, squares with no edges, and rectangles are nothing but squares with two long sides, maybe. It is more shapes, traffic lights, but let's let's face it. <laughs> let's, let's face it. Music ha has all the same elements as, as as the world we live in, the architecture of the world we live in. You know, so when you go to see some art, try to play it. Don't think about what you're playing. Keep your eyes focused on that and follow the lines, follow the colors. You know, see what effect a, a color might have on you. Look at something, don't think about what you're playing, and just start playing. Can you talk more how you develop your sound on the drum set? Talk up. More how you develop your sound on the drum set. I think it's still developing. Uh, the, way, the, the way I'm trying to develop, and I think I'm developing it is, by not listening to so many drummers, and by listening to uh, 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 horn players especially, and people who breathe with mouthpieces, because the drums have no mouthpiece, which is a drag. So uh, a lot of drummers don't know anything about phrasing, or they don't think too much about phrasing, because they're not breathing, you know? So uh, my the sound and touch, I'll, I'll add touch to the word sound, uh, I, I, I'm strictly trying to think the, uh, as the drums, as, as a voice, as in lyric, as in song. I want to make the drums sound like a song, like a lyrical thing, you know, like a voice, you know, like a melody. You know, even though you're playing time, you know, and, and, and you're chugging away, you're phrasing 
will make that musical thing called uh, 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 on the drums. The idea of, of thinking lyrical, thinking linear, thinking melodic. You know, that's why I say uh, after you get your little drum stuff together and you get your little licks together, stop listening at them drummers or you just gonna be playing their licks. Now it's time to go on the inside and you start singing. You start playing what you're singing. Learn how to variate a melody. Learn how to learn how to take a simple melody and make variations on it. I, I, I recommend take I recommend uh, a, a lot of Bach. Play with some get some, yourself some Bach. Uh, I like the Brandenburg Concertos, but uh, but and uh, Scarlatti's cool too because Scarlatti's kind of pop Bach. In a way, and it it it, it, it kind of but but they live on some other but they didn't it. And you can play almost any kind of beat to it. You can play a jazz beat to it, or you can play a reggae beat to it, you can play a funk beat to it. But that's phrasing is what's going to start getting your sound together because you have to phrase. You, and plus, at the same time, you're hearing the harmonic rhythm, which is also shapes and pictures. You know, and you're not listening to a drummer just play a beat. You're hearing the shape of the music player beat. And I don't mean one, two, three, four, I mean like but da 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 you know, so I'm trying to think this way too, besides doing what a drum is supposed to do before you even walk into this room today, we all know that drummers got to keep good time. So you got to have both things happening as a drummer. You got to have a, a horizontal a harmonic concept and of the harmonic rhythm, the rhythm of those changes, that because what, what, what man I said Bach and Scarlatti because uh, they use very functional harmony. Yeah, it's very two uh, two five one uh, three six two five ones, and and when they modulate, you can hear you can hear that certain turnaround that tells you, uh oh, they're not going back to that part. This chord tells me they're going to another section. You know, so you got to be you got to be listening to that. You know, so uh, for, for for me, I would I would say that listen to music that's a little bit out of your comfort zone, not a comfort zone, but a little bit out of what you say. Oh man, I gotta go listen to me some more Tony Williams. And I'm like, yes, yeah, I I, I listen to Tony Williams for a zillion years. I listen to Paul Motion for. Two zillion years, <laughs> you know, and, and, and uh, 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 but but all in all, at the same time, I was very consumed with orchestral music, uh, you know, and, and, and music like that, music that was not so drumistic, because I found that by hanging with drummers and listening to a lot of drummers, you're going to start sounding like drummers, and I think that drummers need to start sounding like musicians. Because the odds of you getting to work, supporting a family, buying diapers, putting kids through school, uh, uh, playing with an all drum band, I don't see that happening. Uh, most of the calls you get, there ain't no other drummers on the gig. It's all guys playing music. So you got to start thinking music. You got to start thinking like a musician, not like a drummer. <laughs> so as soon as you feel you got your drum stuff adequately, on the on, on the hands, you know the necessary beats that it takes, and you only need a few beats to play a gig. I might know ten or twelve different kinds of beats, but I guarantee you, I only use about three or four, and all I do is keep varying them up. You know, either I'll make it a straight beat, or I'll just take the same beat and shuffle it. I mean, for me, girl from Ipanipa, and oh, when the saints go marching in, ain't much difference ryth rhythmically. Little extra one uh, example? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Street beats. 
slow. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So you got one, two, one, two. Now I'm going to add the four down here because it fits perfectly with the cloud. Watch this. Now, O and the C. There's your four, right? Okay, so here we go. Now, here we go. I'm going to take it. taking uh, that feel of a 2-3 clove and just shuffling it, moving it on a snare drum, adding that 4 on a bass drum, which is already up here on your clove up here, because you got 1, 2, 3, and 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. You already got it up here, so you can easily put your foot down with your left hand. It ain't no big deal. It ain't no big act of uh, 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 coordination, you know, to play two things at the same time. Hey John, uh, talk a little bit about, because, uh, you know, being a non-drummer, you know, when I'm playing with a drummer that doesn't define the form of the tune, it's really annoying. And I know you, for once, <laughs> I've played with you for so long that you will not play on a tune, and I'm talking about contemporary tunes or, you know, any kind of tune, without really understanding the form and, and, uh, of the tune beforehand. And talk about some ways that you define the form. Like, like high, I mean, I know you vary the beat a lot, you know, like you might go from swing to Latin or, or right. street beat, things like that, and, um, and how important that is. I mean, to me, it's really important. I really miss it when I don't hear it. Well, number one, if, if, if the band is prepared and rehearsed, the first thing the drummer should do is when, he get, when, he gets to, when the band gets to, together to, to learn a song, if the drummer... The hell with the, look at the drum part, but what you should do is go there and look at that. What's that cat playing on the horn? All right, I gotta, I gotta go, let me get a copy of this, take it home to my piano, internalize it in my melody, and be able to sing it in my diaphragm. So I try to internalize the melody. The form, there's a piece of paper. So, huh, okay, it's got two eights. Let's see how the bridge goes. All right, there's the last eight. Oh, what is this? Oh. Got a four, it's got a four bar tag at the end. No, it's not just a 32 bar tune. So I would define the, the, uh, 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 the transitions, you know. I can hear it if it's, if it's modulating when it gets to the bridge here, then I'm going to do something probably different. I'm not saying I'm going to slam one at a bridge, but I'm going to try to play something uh, colorful or uh, 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 something that I'm hearing in the music that I can play in a linear way that, that also makes me sound like I'm going up to the bridge, that I'm modulating to a new key to play the bridge. You know, and at the end of the song, well, hey, man, you know, you got to know when to come downtown. You know, so you have to, uh, 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 for me, I have to feel a harmonic rhythm and a melodic rhythm and know it. Uh, uh, Steve sometimes, Bring, brings tunes, to, uh, uh, you know, to, to Astral Project, and we look at them, and I'm going, this is not a 32 bar tune. <laughs> <laughs> and why? It ain't, it's, it ain't, I don't know what key it's in, but I have to, I have to learn to hear the, this bass root movement, so I can hear the different sections of the tune. Why is this section of the tune 10 measures long? I don't know, but I gotta le learn it. So I'll know at the end of that 10 measures, I, I got to do something different to help everybody and sort of keep, keep, the, uh, keep the, pl the place marks, you know, so, sort of identify the structure, you know. And, and uh, of course, when I was younger, I would just slam the one of the different parts. But now I've known how to 
I think I've known how to gracefully go from one section to the other. And a lot of that, I would tell drummers, listen to Charlie Parker and a lot of other guys who play over the bar line. Because you can make your transitions, you don't have to make them on one. You can start playing right before that one and play across the bar line into the next section, you know? So playing over the bar line and drums involves two things. Knowing the music really well, knowing how to do it melodically, rhythmically, melodic rhythm, rhythmically, and you have to be, be, be totally empathetic to who you're playing with if you can pull off that kind of stuff. The stuff that I can play with Steve and Tony and James, I can't do that with other people. Make them uncomfortable. But these cats know the way I think, you know, you know, so, they, they, you know, they trust me, you know, and, 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 with, and with their tunes, uh, a, a lot of tunes that are not so etched in stone, you know, uh, as in, you know, uh, you know, typical 32 bar tunes or, uh, what, what, you know, standard kind of forms, uh, I, 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 uh, I, I, I do a little bit more work on it, you know, as far as uh, uh, decorate color in the form, painting the form. Look at Picasso. That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> that is my wife. <laughs> she got some news. <laughs> I think she's back from her mama's. I hope it's not the blues. <laughs> Oh man, she blew my second chorus. <laughs> I it. Call back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I said that's foolishness. Uh, uh, <laughs> Does anybody y'all want to play a little bit? Or yes, 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 yes. Anybody got? You know, yes, yes. I see you got a guitar, man. We got Trey. Plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in. Yeah, and um. So, uh, form, from my standpoint, has the vertical, what I'm going to call harmonic rhythm, and the song form also has what I call horizontal, the melodic rhythm. What do you mean by harmonic rhythm? What does it mean? Har harmonic rhythm would be the changes. Knowing how to set of changes in the that would be the harmonic rhythm is not and I'm not thinking of I'm not thinking of ta 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 two two three four three two three four four two three four one two three four two two three four one two three I'm thinking of So now I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not thinking like this. I'm thinking like this. Which goes back to that word I said earlier, phrasing. A lot of drummers don't get that in their music lessons with drum teachers. You know, you're only going to get that from, if you're a drummer, you're only going to get that from playing with a horn player who has to take, who has a mouthpiece. You've got to imagine that the instrument has a mouthpiece. I, and I say that to anybody's instrument who doesn't have a mouthpiece. If you don't have a mouthpiece on your instrument, imagine you do. Listen to Scott LaFaro, Bill Evans, Village Vanguard Sessions. Listen to the bass player. It sounds as if he's playing that bass and he's got a mouthpiece and he's blowing into it. He sounds like a horn player. All right? Bill Evans, Village Vanguard Sessions. Listen to Scott LaFaro. The bass is very linear, very melodic. Like he's blowing air into it, leaving spaces. You know, I'm not saying you've got to leave spaces because you've got to keep some time on the drums, but you still got to play the phrases and the breathing. 
you can still be going ting, ning, ning, and still be breathing in a, in a musical do that. Listen to Elvin Jones and them guys. Man, that music, it doesn't have a one, two, three, four kind of feel. It has a and, and sometimes Elvin will leave you like this, man, because he's playing a big arc. You know, but the whole band's together. And he's the epitome, of, to me, of uh, linear drumming. Even though he's so ponderous and, you know, everybody analyzes his stuff drumistically. I don't analyze his stuff drumistically. When I listen to Elvin Jones, I listen to him this way. Can you talk about linear drumming and linear playing? Can you talk about that? Yes. Hey, what is it? That melody. Like, you saw me, uh, the first tune I played was Margie. Yeah. The whole time I played the solo, I was, I had Margie in my brain. And in and, and linear playing, to, to make it develop, is you take a simple song and you learn how to make variations on it. Bef before I play, let me just knock this one little exercise out, go move. Uh, <laughs> take a simple song that you, that you know before you even learn how to speak. Because that way it's easier for you to remember. And you remember, we don't want to use our brains too much as a drummer. Right? Because the drums is from the neck down. Drums is from the neck down. You don't need brains to play this instrument. <laughs> you do not need brains. You need brains to learn it a little bit. A little brain. <laughs> my dad said any monkey could play the drum. Huh? I said my dad said any monkey could play the drum. Well, what? Any monkey could play the drum. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go with that. I'll go with that. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite records to listen to at home is a, is a, uh, is a, 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 a elephant, a Thailand elephant orchestra. And it's all elephants playing instruments. <laughs> you know, yeah. And it's one of my favorite records. <laughs> They're playing in Thailand. It plays xylophone, harmonicas, timpanis, gongs. Uh, it's not a joke, right? No, no, no. It's, it's both melodically and percussive. I know he probably meant that because he probably thinks the drums are a, a simple minded instrument, and I think it's a simple minded instrument too, but, but I still think that. This, you can make great music on it. I, I think the mind is way overrated anyway. It's the most overrated organ in the body. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, yeah. I'm a monkey. You call me a monkey. I'm, I'm a monkey. I'm, I am a monkey, Jack. You call me Jack Monk. They say we are monkeys. <laughs> I'll go with that too. <laughs> I've, I've seen the monkeys. I've seen peep, I've seen monkeys act better than a lot of people I know. You know, so. Would you say? <laughs> uh, my ears aren't that good. Yeah. Yeah. Jazz. Shall we play? Yeah. Sure. And that, where's my man? Oh, he left. The guy that got the symbols wrong. Oh, uh, you Oh, there you go. He's in the car. All right, don't leave me. I want you to play in a minute. <laughs> what y'all want to play, fellas? Uh, don't, don't hurt me now. Don't hurt me. <laughs> Phone will not remember from me. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, we can do that. We don't necessarily have to do something last night. Oh, uh, we can do. What you feel, whatever you feel comfortable playing is good. You look, it don't have to be complex. You look like Beatrice. Or... Oh, I mean, no. What was that tune you played? Uh, uh, oh, we can do a wizard thing, yeah. Uh, we'll do wizard thing. Yeah. What's this thing called, uh? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh, what is this thing called, uh? This crazy thing. <laughs> La -di -di -di. Da -da -da -da. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got a particular tempo? Or you, oh, you, you it don't flexible. matter. It don't Chat, matter. You, right on it? Yeah. I mean, How about, let me have eight in front. I got the last eight. One, two, I got eight.
Very comfortable, very loose, and we, and we made up. I think we uh, made up, and we're listening to each other enough to where, what, well, uh, you know, we corrected the little things in the, in the harmonic stuff that that uh, we met, uh, I might have messed up on, or some whatever it was. But, but to me, it was, it, it, you know, we're all listening to each other, and. and 
that alone was enough to make it good. You know? Yeah, y'all play a little bit for me because I want to hear you play. I want to hear everybody play. And, uh, anybody else want to uh, uh, change up and, and, and play, and play a part? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan, you want to pull out the piano? You know, just pull the cover off. Yeah. Play Wrecking Ball. You know, you were talking about uh, the dance of, of, of playing your instrument. Uh, you know, if you, play, if you play a horn, you can't be jumping around stage or else you're going to mess up your intonation, I think, right? If you start moving around a lot, you know, right? Right, Ed? I don't know. I don't know, bro. I, yes, sir. I, I see you in some, I see you in some pretty weird positions when we be playing, bro. So to me, I mean, sitting that right now. So, no, I guess my, my point is... It's not valid because he dances. But let's get back to where we were when, when I saw Arnett and Dewey Redman was playing saxophone. And I was sitting right in the center, and Dewey Redman, they're playing saxophone, and this is back, this is back in the early 70s, and Dewey was, uh, you know, much, he's passed away now, but when he was very young, younger. Uh, when he, when he played with Arnett, he stood there, and uh, when he played, no matter what he was playing on his horn, his body didn't do this, he didn't do this, he didn't do his eyes and close, he didn't bend, his fingers really never went higher than an inch off the keys, even if he was playing or anything, you didn't, you didn't see any of this. He, somehow or another, he had this real, I always use the perspective of a basketball to a baseball. The, the, it's the same thing, except the baseball, he just, just, his perspective of movement just was all like that. And it was like, and he saw that it's a crowded audience, that it's a good theater, and he just kind of, if he did have his eyes open, it, it basically would be looking straight you know, to maybe the middle of the audience. And, uh, but the idea was he never did this, he never did that, he wasn't doing this, uh, uh, which is not, I mean, that's good. If, if you kind of play and it does that, that's good. But, let's, but I could tell by what he was playing, what was going on the inside was a disco, bro. I mean, they were dan he was dancing on the inside. It was the most phenomenal saxophone playing I ever have ever heard in my life. And it was really funny about 30 years later when he was a much older man and he was kind of, I saw him in a, uh, we're in a Sweden or Holland or something, all that at this big festival. And the promoter was freaking out because he couldn't find uh, Dewey Redmond. And Dewey Redmond, all the cats got off the airplane and they got on a bus to go to this festival. The Dewey snuck off to the train station and uh, took a train. And no, he never told him about it. So the promoter was freaking out in the lobby of this restaurant. What is Dewey? He's the star of the show. And here comes Dewey out of the elevator. Dude. <laughs> where's the wine? <laughs> <laughs> and the promoter goes, Dewey, where are you been? He says, I took the train. I got tired of waiting for you. <laughs> All by himself. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, but at that time, when, when I saw Dewey, he was much older. And he still had that same focus. I mean, he was moving a little bit, but probably because he had, 
probably because he wanted to, you know. But when I know, I just I want to go back to the first thing time in Chicago was the most, you know, everything I said about dancing he was doing on the inside, you know. I could hear it, you know. And uh, I advise you to 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 read about dancers. Uh, it, 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 I think it, it'll put another, it'll shed a little light or it, it or, or, I, that's wrong, that's just cliche. I think that it could possibly, to the, the individual involved, I think that by learning something from dancers, and I have worked with dancers a lot. And, uh, uh, <laughs> and I was working on Bourbon Street when I was 16. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, a lot of, uh, 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 when I was very young, I, want, I, want, I, wanted, I wanted to read Stravinsky, as much about Stravinsky as I could, because I had studied for two semesters and analyzed a bunch of Stravinsky stuff. It was a course in college when I went to school. I went to classical school. I didn't go to, they didn't have jazz school, so I had to take classical stuff. And so uh, two semesters, uh, and one of them was just Stravinsky, form and analysis. And so, I, and, you know, after I got out of college, you know, I said, this is interesting, you know. I, I, so I, I found like a, a biography, an autobiography. I found uh, a book on uh, his lectures. I found another book about Stravinsky and, uh, and, and, and his association with ballet. And I read all of these books. And 85% of the material in the books all Stravinsky talked about was dance, ballet. And I kept reading the books, waiting to find out more about his music and music. They have a little bit about his music. But when Stravinsky started to rap and talk, it was all about his association with dance and how that inspired him to make his music. Not just his ballets, because Stravinsky wrote for ballet a lot. But it, it, but it, 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 it was also a tremendous uh, a, a, a firebird uh, suite is a tremendously, uh, he'd he tell you right off the bat, it's 95% geared toward dance. And every time I've gone uh, to hear, see, firebird suite play, there's never been any dancers. There's always the music, you know? Uh, so, uh, you have to think a little bit outside of the box of your instrument, I think, in order to get into what I very first said when I got here. External, internal. That's where you're making your changes right now. You're gathering all of this great external information and you're digesting it. And then you're going to learn to teach yourself the internal information that you have stored. You're going to do some reduction, some cleaning up, some changing, you know, editing, I call it. And then it's going to get to be, that'll be you. That'll be your personality. That'll be you. And that, 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 that's the, besides going to school and learning how to play great, like, like Train or, or, or Less Than Young or, 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 or blah, blah, blah. I could name a million greats, right? But it, 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 do that. Cop their works. Cop their, you know, stuff. But once you close that hotel room and you're walking down to the gig, Forget it and get on that bandstand, you know. Don't play what you're playing in the hotel room on the bandstand, all right? Because that's preconceived. You're not living in the moment. It's also egotistical. And it's also practicing. And practicing on a bandstand is, is jive. A lot of times I've been on the road with cats. Be in a hotel and during the day I'd be walking through the halls, you know, maybe going up and down the elevator. And, and I'd be, oh, I hear a guy, I hear a guy uh, room 107, who's that? He's practicing the saxophone at noon or something, you know. <laughs> so I listen, I listen, I listen. And that night I go to the gig, you know, and I see the cat at the gig, and right before we go on the stage, I say, and I look. Don't be playing what you was playing in that room on that bandstand tonight, all right? Don't be practicing up on the bandstand. <laughs> just, for, just, to, just to mess with them, you know? So my point being, you know, when you get on a bandstand, lose the head. Lose the head. You know? 
Make, make that head become your antennas to what everybody's playing so we can all get inside the planet. So we all can get inside this sphere and make a groove which is more elevating and higher than any one individual can achieve alone. And when I say listening, I mean surrender. And I always say this cliche, surrender yourself to the music. Let the music play you. It's not about you. Your ego is garbage. Your ego is your biggest enemy sometimes. It can be, but for some people, they need more ego. For some people, they have too much. But if that ego takes over in a moment of what's going on, you could jeopardize the collective altitude. I can't get off the ground with one wing on a plane. And that's all you are. You're an airplane with one wing. You're just going to wreck. All look like a fool. <laughs> you know? So the whole idea is to be, who said empathetic? Steve said it. The whole idea is to be in total empathy with the people at the moment and do what it takes. And a lot of times that means backing down a little bit so you can comfort this guy and cradle him. That's what I say. James, let's cradle this guy. He's not a good player. Let's make him sound good. <laughs> 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 so boy, it's it, 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 it. No, not you, not you, not, not Steve. No, 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 Steve Lincoln. You gotta hear the sucker play bass. You gotta hear him play bass, bro. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> He's absolutely Okay. Right. Out, out of three, right. one, two, maybe three days to play, I'm out of play right <laughs> Wow. I got, um, I got that on camera. I got that on camera. I'm making, I'm making, I'm making, a, making a career move. <laughs> uh, <laughs> career I'm move. just getting close and I want to hear these guys yeah, play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want y'all, I want y'all, I want y'all to try this exercise because it involves both this bottom part we're talking about the, the physical dance of playing the instrument and this applies to any instrument because it's, you, you involve a movement in this part of energy in your body and this part of energy in your body and these two things work together like an engine you know so uh, you know it, 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 and this is a good move for anybody who plays an instrument just so that your body will be used to it Four steps forward, four steps backward, and you can clap a two, three, five, for example. Two, How to do that, and then you're gonna have this, and you're gonna have this, and that's what you are. You, you and read the first hundred pages of any yoga book will teach you about chakras and breathing from the diaphragm. The five chakras in your body. As a drummer, I basically focus on the one chakra and number four, which is right here. Okay, this is one, right here. One, one, two, th three. Four, five. Mm. This is four. This is one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid to dance, man. That's music. Yeah. That's music. Dancing is so good for you. And you you don't have to be a good dance. Most people say, "Oh, I don't dance because they self they self conscious." Just wiggle, man. The music will pull you. And, 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 and not within the first half an hour. You ain't got it. You got to do it for like two, three, four hours. You got to get lost in the, de in the music pulling here. I don't care if you do it at home, but I say go out in public and do it. In a, you know, in a disco, a bar, a dance club, or wherever a bunch of people are dancing. For the first 20 minutes, you're going to feel a little self-conscious. But after a, a while goes by, man, you, you know, the music's just going to pull you. And it, go ahead, go with the simple pop music. Boom, 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 boom. It's just, you know, just to get that, just to get your body, you know, because 
And and then then you know then if you know if you need to stand still, believe me, your body's still going to be dancing like Fred Astaire on the inside. Oh, whoever your favorite dancer is. Who? Okay, can I please hear you yeah. guys, Scott? Can we all please hear you guys? Put something. Yeah. yeah I need another chance, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah.
Thank you.